Hey everyone and welcome to my how to attack as Kea on the map Haven and we're going to learn how to use the dagger, flash and nade combinations to push for yourself or be a supporting Kea for your team. So stick around, we're going to jump right into it. And then here is a TLDR for those who can't stick around. You want to line your dagger here like that, throw the nade up with the timing correctly and then you flash with your teammate. So TLDR for B is just throwing this one-way flashbang, playing off this corner, and then throwing a dagger to support your teammates through the garage. And then the TLDR for C attack is setting up a dagger lineup that lands on site in about 7 seconds, timing this flash here with it, so you can push back anybody who's playing aggressive, and then you're able to push onto site with your teammates, and then use situational nades to clear out hard corners. Alright, so the first dagger we're going to take a look at is very simple. It's just a pre-round setup before the wall goes on. You just want to throw it and make sure it hits this back wall. What this does is it lets you know if there's anybody pushing up short here, some early round aggression. Sometimes a jet or a chamber will take a risky play. They're able to you know, get a headshot and then dash out really quickly without getting punished. This lets you know if somebody's down here and at the same time if they are pushing, it suppresses them so they're not able to throw any utility. What's also nice about this dagger, we toss it here. It also clears this little short A link here, lets you know how they might be playing A. Sometimes you'll see an omen or a breach play this wall just because they're able to be either concuss it or flash through it in case of a rush. So they'll play maybe a heavier stack on A and leave B open for retake. And this person will play a quick retake on A. And so you kind of get a better understanding of how they're setting up their map control. And the second dagger that I have is a bit more accurate, but it doesn't clear out the short A link here, but it's just mainly for sewers. You just want to toss it right here as deep as you can in this little cubby. And make sure it hits inside this. So it just goes a little bit extra, so it clears out this little corner here. And so what you can do in the beginning of the round is toss it, but what you have to know is that if they do have a jet dash or if they have a neon and they're playing very aggressive, they can get to the bottom here and take a shot. So what I wouldn't recommend doing is throwing the dagger and just thinking that it's clear and running in like this. This dagger, especially when it comes to suppressing agents such as like a neon or a jet, they will be able to get to this corner with their util at the same time. So if you hit this dagger, just make sure that you follow it up. And then another dagger that I have is if we're executing on site and we're in this corner here, we've cleared heaven, we've cleared this back spot, and I'm able to get to this corner and we're playing off of a time push, I'll toss a dagger right onto this box here. What this does is it clears as much on site as possible and lets you know if anybody's playing in these close corners. So if there's a person here, they'll most likely shoot it and kill it. So in order to kill it, you have to be on the front and this gives you a lot of information about where the enemy team is. And then finally, for my last dagger, it's a lineup for on-site. So once you've taken A main and your team is setting up an execute, what I'll do is I'll just jump on this box here. And just remember this box because we're going to use it for a couple other lineups for the flashes and the nades. And so I'll just hop onto the sandboxes here and I'll just aim up and I'll just make sure that my UI utility, if you look really closely, I'll zoom in the flashlight and the light. So light, flashlight. So I just hook the flashlight on. So if you just look, I'll just hook it on like that. And what you do is you just toss your dagger into the sky. The reason why I like this lineup is because it lands on top of the box. So if anybody is playing in the back of the site, it'd be harder to kill or that they're going to have to aim their attention there. Next, we'll take a look at flashbangs. I have three flashbangs here on site and I'll just kind of show you how they work and how they work together. And so this first one here is just kind of want to line up at this little like shadow. There's a lot of room for error. But this is for any A sewer aggression, so sometimes your teammate want to take a good angle here, take a shot really quick, and you don't want to be punished from this sewer angle. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of like line up on this light. There's room for error. What you want to do is you aim at the second line here and toss it over. And what this does is it creates a one-way flashbang so that you can punish anybody who's coming out of short here. So what I'll do is when the round starts, wall drops, I'll click it, I'll kind of push over, and I'll just make sure I have some spacing. So this is a pop flash for anybody who's playing really aggressive. So this is flash number one. And flash number two is also another supporting flashbang. So this is if you want to do some early game aggression, say you have a duelist who wants to push in fast, Maybe it's a raise or a jet and they want to get across or they want to push into this lane. So what I'll do is you can line up on this line. There's a lot of room for error, but the most important thing is that you just want to get an angle where you flash through this little hole right here. As once again, lots of room for error. So I'm going to throw the flash so you can see what it looks like. So it pops right here. If you looked at it, it's like right here at the top of this little roof. And if you look at this side here, anybody who's holding this spot, so I'm just going to ping it again so you can see. 
So if somebody, anybody's holding this angle here with an op, this flash will do a pop flash right on top of this little roof here. So they'll have to force off this angle, and it gives a lot of space for your duelist or anybody who wants to push this lane here. So this is, person's off. They can start taking these lanes now. Another flash that I have as a supportive flash for anybody who wants to execute on site with their duelist. It's the same kind of positioning. You just want to jump up on the sandbox here. And this is the same one that we saw on the TLDR because it helps push with your lineups on the dagger and the nade. So when you hear, you just want to aim up at this little square here, and as you're running forward, as it opens up, you want to toss a flash over this wall. So I'm going to show you how to do that as you're kind of walking forward. So you need that momentum for it to land exactly where we need it to. So as soon as the wall opens up, you throw this flash, and it lands right here at the top of this little wall here. And so there's a lot of room for error. You just want to get it as far as possible as you're running forward. So just like that. And this lands up here. What's great about this flash is that it'll pretty much flash anybody on site, especially if they're playing deep here, it'll flash them as well, unless they're playing close and they have to hug this corner to do it. And what's great is that if somebody's playing this more like further angle off this box, which is very common, it'll flash them. It also flashes anybody playing the short lane over here, playing this longer angle. And so this is a very supportive flash if your duelists are planning to go in and you're ready to execute. And then finally, depending on how you use your flash combination, and if you do have one left, uh, there's a couple of ones that you can do when you're taking on site. Uh, the one I like to do the most is I just, I just toss it over behind this box and my team is executing just so we can kind of gain more space and then I'll clear this angle over here. I love using the nade to clear off corners, especially when it comes to rushing or pushing and I just really need to take better angles or I need to clear spots to make sure I have less ability to get punished. So whether it's clearing off a box like this when I'm pushing and you want to toss one into the center as you're taking, as you're aiming to not get punished or if you're pushing up and you want to throw it up against this wall, clear this corner no one's here you can start to clear some of the other corners as you kind of go through all right so the nade lineups that i have are when you're timing and execute and say for example you've taken control of a main here the first one is to help support your teammates who are pushing through the sewer what you want to do is hug into this box here in the sandbox and all the lineups are going to be on the sandbox so you don't have to worry too much about other lineups so we're just going to get comfortable here on the sandbox here while you're standing so if you look at the lava foliage here up here you'll notice that there's just like one little circle that has some white so i'm going to zoom in so look at this little white little disc here it's just right above the light you just want to aim here there's a lot of room for error you just want to jump and toss it you want to make sure you get that jump so you get the momentum it'll hit up against this wall and land right here this is great when you're taking a full side execute and your teammates are going through short. They're clearing this angle. They don't have to focus on this angle right away. They can clear so they can push up and they'll have this little angle here clear for them. The second lineup is at the same spot once again here on the sandbox. You just want to hug it into this corner here. Now this is for when you're pushing with your team on long and you want to clear off heaven. So say for example they're playing like an operator or you just know that they like to play up there. Um, so what you want to do, I'll zoom in right here on this little spot right next to this column for the roof. You just want to aim here and jump and toss. So you want to make sure you get that momentum. Jump and toss and this lands right here into heaven. And make sure that if anybody's clearing that angle they're forced to push off. You can do a really aggressive push on this uh, most of the times that'll be smoked as well but if you really want to push that this will be taken off and you really just have one angle to focus on here so the last nade I have is for the back side of the default box here. And so they've changed the radius of the nade. So this doesn't cover as much as it used to but it's still really effective. You just want to sit here on the sandbox once again and this time you're not going to jump, you're just going to throw it. So you want to just align your UI with the top of this roof here. So I'll just zoom in so you can kind of see like the height. So if you just look at right here how it touches the grassy knoll. So you want to make sure that your crosshair just goes up from this light bulb because this is where the back of the site is and then you line up your util and you say, okay, we're going to execute. You toss it up. This gives you just enough time to follow up. Your duelists rush in. You can kind of follow up. The nade starts pulsing. Toss your dagger and you can just clear out the whole site. So the first one here is when you're just kind of aiming this scope here, and sometimes there'll be a person aiming if they're aggressive. So I won't peek too far, and I'll just kind of like get into this little edge here, and I'll just toss it into this corner. This corner will clear off anybody who's on the right side of the garage, but also the left side of B. So let's toss that again so you can see. So this is a very helpful digger to gather as much information as possible. So if you're just looking for maybe how they're stacking a side of the map, I'll toss this digger here just to kind of make sure I get some early game information on how much they're playing on the garage and the B site.
Now, another dagger that I have is for the mid garage doors pre round. What you want to do is you want to look down here and you want to align your cursor right here looking completely down into the intersection of these bricks here. So you want to look down completely and make sure that you're right here in the center of where this line intersects right here on this big brick and the small one. You want to aim up and I'm going to zoom in so you can see there's like these three flowers here on this little wall. You want to aim at the right petal of the middle flower. So just want to make sure it's right in the center there. It's not pixel perfect, but it is very accurate. As you can see, the center of the cursor is at the right side of the flower, and you want to be crouching as you do this. And right when the round starts, you toss it into the doors. And what this does is it goes back in through these little doors into the cracks, and it hits the back side of the site here. And then finally, my last dagger is if you've cleared off this window in the arches and no one's peeking and they're not playing aggressive on B or they're not really playing B, they're playing retake. And that's something that you're noticing and your team is planning to attack on B. If you just look here at the top of this ceiling where the ceiling meets the wall, that's where I'll aim and I'll throw it so it hits the top of this box on B's site. So you just want to hug up against this wall, aim at this line and toss it over. So what this does is it lands right on top of the mid box and as you can see it clears off the entire site except the very back bench. And so if your teammates are pushing and you're playing the window, you're playing the flank, you toss it over. This will let your teammates know if there's anybody on the site itself. So for flashes, I have two very simple ones. One is for the B arches here and the other one is in the garage. So this one's very simple. What you want to do is just hug up against this wall. This can be a supportive flash for a teammate that you have who's planning to strafe out through this lane. Or it can be for yourself. And so I'm going to do it so you can kind of see what it looks like. You see how it lands right here? It's very important that you run forward and you throw this because if somebody's playing this deep angle here and your flash doesn't hit and it goes around here, they won't be pushed off this angle and you're going to get punished for it. You have to hug up against this wall and you have to move forward with the momentum and toss the flash so it lands right here or as close as possible with this angle so that when you do swing, you can swing with the flash. And this will not flash you or your teammates. So you can throw this out as you're running and come out with the same timing as the flash comes out. All right, and then finally for mid flash, I have one for the garage doors here. And this is gonna be a low flash for anybody hiding in this corner or it gives you the opportunity to aim here. So if you get across here, you just wanna hug this wall and you wanna aim around this little block here because what you wanna do is you wanna have the flash land around right there. So you wanna just toss it right there and you see it lands right in this little like vicinity here because you want to make sure that it's far enough to flash if there's a person in this corner here. And so what, why you want to throw it on the floor here is because if you run over this flash, it'll give you minimal flash. Watch, I'll show you how that works. You just toss it here and you run over. You see how even though you got flash, it's still really minimal. So that's why you want to throw this flash in particular on the floor right here so that as you're kind of running through it, you can clear corners and anybody who doesn't will get flashed. So what I like to do with nades on B are all situational, but I do have just one lineup I'll show you in terms of post-plant scenario. But for the most part, these are all pretty much situational. If there's a person hiding in this corner, especially with the buff on KO, this nade can clear out this corner now for you. And then if smokes come through and we're about to plant, the nade buys just enough time for the plant. So I'll either throw it here or throw it here. Just enough to you know, make them not push the smoke so that we can secure a good plant position. All right, and then my last nade is a lineup for B. If somebody has planted for the open spot, and this is for a post-plant scenario, say for example, you're playing the flank and you wanna play a cheeky lineup, or if this is like an eco round and everybody's playing back, you just wanna get the bomb planted, everybody kind of runs back for lineups, playing in the window and the uh, mid doors area. It's super easy, and I also have a lot of lineups like this. I'll link in the top right corner here from my Haven lineup, so you can see if you wanna play more lineups. But this one's my favorite, it's the easiest. You just line up here on this bucket, you aim up at this golden pawn here and just right underneath the head here. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see. Right here, you just want to aim up and you want to run and toss because you need that momentum for it to land on B. So it's really that simple. You just run and toss and it lands directly here on the site. Now why I love this nade lineup is because it buys you enough time to follow up either from the window here. You wait for the four pulses. You can either aim from the window here once they re-tap and you can follow up or you throw this nade and you can follow up over here. So you wait for the four bursts and you wait for the tap and you can come back down here. So it gives you enough time so that if it's a one-on-one -on -one scenario, if they're faking the tap and they're aiming here, like they'll fake the tap and they'll just kind of aim here, it's a 50-50 chance between you popping out here or you popping up here and it gives you enough time to do that. And so that's why I love that nade lineup.
So what I notice is a lot of KOs will kind of peek out and throw their dagger and try to hit it into the center of the site. Or they'll do like a jump peek and then they'll like throw it and they'll try to like get it onto the site as they're like doing a quick jump peek. That's incredibly dangerous and I try not to put myself in a position like that. You certainly can do that and I've done it before, especially in games where I just don't have the time to set something up. But if you are working with a team and you do have time to set up, um, here's a lineup for the default box on C. So what you do is just, it's a lot of room for error, really. You just want to line up here at the center of this line, just kind of walk forward. As I said, a lot of room for error. Even if you go to the left or the right a little bit more, it's okay. But you just want to run here at the center, aim up, and if you notice that the roof line here, there's just one big divot right here. You see that? It's like the only one here. So you just want to aim at the center of this little divot, toss it up. Super easy. See that? What this does is it lands here at the default box, and if somebody's here and it gets killed, they have to be at the front. So you know that this person is not in the back, and they'll have either somebody in these corners. And so you want to make sure that when you throw this dagger, you're aiming it at the divot, aiming it here, line it up, aim it up at the divot, you toss it over. So this does essentially the same thing if you were to peek this lane and throw a dagger here. It gives you the same amount of information, but less risky, so that you don't have to try to peek an op here to just land an information gathering dagger pre-round. So the second dagger is a more accurate dagger, and this one clears off the platform on the left side. And say, for example, you're always playing against like a jet who keeps taking this angle. And this is a really powerful angle, especially because it's a high-low. You can either play high on the platform, you can jump down, and you're safe for quite a bit of time. So what I'll do is... If we're slow playing it, I'll just kind of peek out and you'll get to see this like little roof here. And this roof is at the platform. So just to show you kind of like where it is, this is like the corner there. And so what you want to do is you kind of want to just align like maybe one, two, or three. So one, two, three little horns here. And then you just want to aim up where this line is in this electrical box. So the third horn on the electrical box. And like I said, there's lots of room for error, so you don't have to be super accurate with this. But what you want to do is you just want to toss it over. And this lands right here in the back and it will clear off the hard left platform corner. And this is great because then when you're pushing up here, you'll know that no one's here, so you can focus on these like longer angles. And then the last dagger on site, and so if you've thrown one of those early ones to help your team take, you've executed on site, and now you've planted, you're playing the retake, my favorite dagger to throw is right here up against this wall in between the two windows here. You just toss it up. This is so incredibly powerful as it helps suppress and push back any retake effort for seven seconds. So especially if they're going to be rushing in or if you just plan the timing correctly, this dagger will clear off the window side here, anybody pushing, and it also give you a ton of information as to where they're setting up their retake execution. And then finally, flashes for C. Now, I don't have flashes for every single situation you're going to come up with because there are going to be times where you're going to need to throw flashes at the platform to take more space. You're going to need to throw it behind the default box. And if this is smoked off, you're going to have to pop flash through smokes to take on sites for an execute. So I don't have like, okay, every single flash. That's Those are just flashes you're going to have to kind of learn as you're taking the site. This one is in case there's anybody playing a long angle here. Maybe it's an operator. You have a chamber or a jet who's on the box. What I like to do is I'll just kind of move up a little bit. And similar to the dagger, I'll just make sure I'm not punished by making sure that I'm just maybe at the second horn here and I just want to aim into this little window that I have and run forward and toss. So if you look at this again, so I'll toss it over and if you look at where this flash lands, it's pretty high but it's like somewhere around here. If they're up here, they're aiming down, they'll get flashed or if they're over here, they'll get flashed. They have to concede this angle and by this time, they'll probably know if you're planning to take the site or if you've already overtaken this angle from them. So what they'll do, they'll reposition themselves or they'll re-peak if they're aggressive. And so I love tossing this first flash just to gain some more space and to push off anybody who might be playing an aggressive angle. So I'll just toss this either for my teammate or for myself and I'll gain this angle here. And now they have to re-peak off of me. And finally, for nades, I have a lineup that helps cover the garage entrance once it's smoked. I have a lineup for long here, it's kind of like a default for long, and then I'll usually use my nades for situational spots, depending on how the game's going. And so if it's like a save round, for example, I'll throw a nade here to kind of clear out this angle. Uh, if I know that somebody's playing platform a lot deep, I'll just aim at this window, run and toss it. And if somebody's playing the logs angle a lot, what I'll just do is if there's a window here, you just want to aim up a little bit, run and toss it, and it bounces off and it'll land off of this off angle here. So if they're playing here aggressive, you can kind of punish them for it. But if you want to play an execute, I do have two spots here. The first one is a pre-round setup. 
I learned this from NRG Techs in their VCT match. So you want to do is sit on top of this box. Aim down at this corner as deep as you can, looking downward. And then you just want to aim up at the top of this little leaf. What I'll do is I'll just crouch, aim up, and then I'll just toss it over. What this does is it lands right here in the corner. It's not as effective as it used to be because they've nerfed the radius of this, but it'll make sure that if anybody's playing this hard angle, they can't swing out to your teammates and you can get the corner on them before they do. And then finally, my last nade is for a lineup for this default plant spot. It's more it's not really default, but it's like a long plant. Uh, you just kind of hug yourself in this corner here. It's super easy. You just aim up here at this little uh, notch. I'll zoom in really quick. It's the third notch. You just want to line up your UI here like this so you can see and you just toss it over and this one lands right here in this corner This will give you some time, but it also push off an enemy to the right here or behind to kind of follow this up Thank you so much for watching my in-depth guide on Haven I hope this helps give you a little bit of confidence as you're executing in comp games or with a team or as you're learning how to play KO Please don't forget to like and subscribe I'm also going to link my video for more Haven lineups as you see in the preview video here if you want to explore a little bit more of these fun and cheeky nades for default plant spots. Thanks so much and hope this helps you in the game.